Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for joining me this morning. We are going to be reading Exodus 29 this morning. Exodus 29, uh, continuing to roll through the scriptures, reading every single word of the Bible together. And you can join me live every day if you want on my website and YouTube page, or you can simply watch the replay anytime on my website, TorahLifeMinistries.org. So thank you, everybody, for joining me this morning. We are going to continue uh, with a part of the Bible that's often missed or, or skipped over, and that is about uh, the, the, the tabernacle service. And last time we saw about the, the dressing of the priest, and now we're going to be getting into sacrifices. And this is definitely a part that many people skip over, but there's a lot of significance to this, uh, and it all leads up to the ultimate sacrifice. So we're certainly not going to be skipping this or any of the scripture over, and what a shame that we would people would even consider to skip over the word of our Creator. We're going to start off with the Shema, which is Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kavu, Mahutov, Leolam Va'ed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh is our Elohim, Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Amen and hallelujah. All right. So we are going to be reading Exodus 29 today. And Exodus 29 talks about the dedication of the priest. But it also gets into uh, a, a, a very good, uh, good amount. It gets into the sacrificials and the sacrificial system. So we'll be covering that today as well. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they hear about sacrifices, especially uh, even the system of Christianity and stuff, uh, they don't want to hear about the death and the blood of animals. Uh, you know, you know, it's, it's a shame that people today don't even want to hear about the death of Messiah. They just want to think about uh, good things in life, and, and, and they don't want to hear about pain and suffering and, and anguish and sin. But that's part of Scripture. And uh, it's a significant part of scripture because without all of this, we don't need a Messiah. So, so we need to be thankful and we need to look at where these sacrifices were pointing to and the plan of our creator and this whole thing where it was pointing to. It's very significant. So we're going to be reading uh, Exodus 29. It says, this is a ceremony you must follow when you concentrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests to serve me as priest. And then it says to take a, a, a young bull and two rams with no defects. To take a young bull and two rams with no effects. And that's the, the New Living Testament. Now we're all going to be reading, we're also going to be reading the One New Man Bible today. And the One New Man Bible says, and this is the thing you will do to sanctify them to minister to me. In a priest office, take one young bull and two rams without blemish. Now, I like that translation much better. Uh, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I didn't grow up learning scripture, and I know this word's used, uh, so so to say, an off, uh, you know, a good amount of times. But uh, I, I don't know, you know, what the word where he says here. Uh, in 29.1, when it says to uh, to concentrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Now, I don't know about you listening here and watching, but uh, me being new to the Bible in terms of not being born into the scriptures, the first couple of times I read this, okay, the first couple of times I read this, I don't know what the word concentrate means. Uh, but then when I read the One New Man Bible, it says, uh, and then the thing to do to sanctify to sanctify, and that, I know what that means, that makes much more sense to me. So, uh, so let, let's continue to read here in, uh, in verse two, and it says, then using a choice of wheat flour uh, and no yeast, make loaves of bread and, and thin cakes mixed with olive oil and, wa and wafers, spread them with oil, place them all in a simple basket and present them as a, uh, as a, at the entrance of the tabernacle, along with the young bull and the two rams. And now this is getting ready for the offerings. 
There's, there's many different kinds of offerings. There's not just one offering. So, 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 they're getting this ready. They're preparing this, and it says here in the note in in, in thirty. Let me see here. Got to actually. Yeah. All right. Good job, Paul. All right. So uh, here we go. So it says uh, the note here in verse twenty-nine to open a chapter. It says, "Why did Yahweh set up the priesthood? Yahweh had originally intended that his chosen people be." Uh, be a kingdom of priests with both the nation as a whole and each individual uh, dealing directly with Yahweh. But the people's sin perverted them from hap uh, that from happening because uh, a sinful person is not worthy of approaching a perfect Elohim. Yahweh then appointed a priest from the tribe of Levi uh, and set up the system of sacrifices to help the people approach him. He promised to forgive the people's sins if they would offer certain sacrifices uh, administrated by the priest on behalf of the people. Though the, through these priests and their work, Yahweh wished to, uh, to prepare all people for the coming of Yeshua Messiah, who would be again, who would once again uh, offer uh, a direct relationship with Yahweh for anyone who would come into him. Uh, but until Yeshua came, the priests were the people's representatives before Yahweh. Uh, so, so it says, understanding this system, you can understand better what Yahweh did for us or what Yeshua did for us. Yahweh did through Yeshua. So uh, again, as I was saying, there, there's significance to uh, what's happening here and, and, and what's going to be happening. So verse four, verse, verse uh, four says, uh, present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of the tabernacle and wash them with water and wash them with water. Now the one new man Bible, such a great translation gives a great note here. What do you think about when it says and wash them with water? Well, it says here and the one new man Bible says, uh, it says, uh, immersion for purification uh, has evolved into what Christians call baptism. And then there's a whole note. Uh, there's a whole note on baptism. So basically, uh, when it says to wash them, this is the, the, the first types of baptisms that were there. They're washing Yahweh's holy people to clean them to do the pure work that Yahweh has ordained for them. And then it says, dress Aaron in the priestly garments, uh, the tunic and the robe worn with the ephod, the ephod itself and the chest piece. Then wrap uh, the decorative uh, sash uh, of the ephod around him. Place the turban on his head and uh, his head and fasten the sacred medallion on a turban. Then anoint him. Now, now those are the, that whole thing we just read about the dressing of him. That's what uh, that's what we read previously. That's what we just read uh, uh, in the last chapter about the, their 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 garments. And then anoint him by pouring uh, anointing oil on his head. Next, present uh, his sons and dress them in their tunics. Wrap the sashes around the waist of Aaron and his sons and put their special head coverings on them. Then the right to the priesthood will be theirs by, by, and this says law forever in his way you will ordain Aaron and his sons. But when we go here, that's verse, verse nine. But we go to verse nine, the one new man Bible. And it says, and you will gird them with bells, uh, with belts, Aaron and his sons, and will put on the hats of them. And the priest offering will, be theirs for the perper perpetual statute, and you will concentrate Aaron and his sons. Perpetual, perpetual statute uh, is used, not the word law. You see, here's the igno ign 
doctation, uh, in, in that doctation of the word law, uh, being slipped into this. It was never referred to as a law, as we see here in verse uh, verse 9, as we just read. It says, and you will gird them with belts, Aaron and his sons, put them uh, the hats on them, uh, and the priesthood's office will be uh, theirs for a perpetual statute. You see, statutes and commands and guidelines and instructions and the will of Yahweh, these are the words of what they are. They weren't a law. The law is what Yeshua came to do away with. That was what man's tradition added to these guidelines and instructions that our Creator has. And it said in Deuteronomy, do not add or take away, but keep my commandments. And we see that when we read these both together, we see how they, 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 they added this and they got this in together here. Now we're going to go to verse 10. Verse 10 says, uh, Bring the young bull to the entrance of the tabernacle, uh, where Aaron and his sons will lay their hands on its head. So we see the word laying of hands. And uh, some people might uh, try to equate this with the gift of, the, the, of laying on hands. And uh, look, Yahweh doesn't need a human being uh, to lay their hands on anyone to heal them. He doesn't need that. Uh, when, when we're laying our hands on something, whether it be an animal or whether it be a Bible or whether it be a person, uh, Yahweh can certainly work uh, work through us and do things through us, but he doesn't need us. Uh, th this isn't for Yahweh, for, for the people to lay their hands on on the animals or to lay their hands on on, 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 on a book. Uh, or to lay This isn't for Yahweh, this is for us. You know, and, and one of the significance of the laying of hands is transferring uh, our sin uh, or, or, or an identification or represent, representative of now our sin is going to go from us to that animal. And then we get the same thing later for Yeshua, bearing our sins and our curses and becoming a curse for us on the cross or the tree and dying for us. Uh, so we see this here. And, and the note says from verses 29, 10 to 41, it says, why were there such detailed rituals in in, in uh, connection with these sacrifices it says partly it was for the quality control a centralized standard standardized form of worship preventing problems on behalf uh, uh problems of belief which could arise from individuals creating their own worship also it it, it differentiated the hebrews from the pagans the canaanites uh, they would meet in the promised land uh, and it said, by closely following Yahweh's instructions, the Hebrews could not possibly join the Canaanites in their immoral religious practices. Finally, it showed Israel that Yahweh was serious about his relationship with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So uh, we're going to continue to read here. Verse 11. Verse 11. See, again, this is what most people skip over, but I hope you're seeing uh, some good significance to it already uh, that we're covering and going over here. So, uh, let's see. So, verse 11 says, Then slaughter the bull in uh, Yahweh's presence at the entrance of the tabernacle. Put some of its blood on the horns of the altar uh, with your finger and pour out the rest at the base of the altar. Take all the fat around the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and the fat around them and burn it all on the altar. Then take the rest of the bull, including its hide, meat, and dung and burn it outside the camp as a sin offering. So now you're burning this outside the camp as a sin offering. Uh, so there's different type of offerings. There's a peace offering. There's a sin offering. There's there's, there's, there's uh, dif uh, different types of offerings. Uh, it says, next, Aaron and his sons must lay their hands on the head of one of the rams. Then slaughter the ram and, and, uh, and splatter the blood against the sides of the altar. Now, let me just say here, there's so much today uh, about blood in, in, in science and on the news and in media because so much disease is carried through blood today when we think about blood. And hearing all this blood, I mean, you can't even go to a doctor today without the wearing gloves because nobody wanted to touch blood. Why? Because certain diseases and things uh, 
are, are transferred through the blood. And why wasn't there this fear of blood back then and so on? Well, first I'll say it says in the scriptures, thy life is in thy blood. And we're talking about the blood of Yeshua Messiah. But the life is in healthy blood as well. Uh, you know, and certainly disease and things can be transferred uh, through blood. But uh, the blood belongs to Yahweh. And there's no way that Yahweh is going to let the blood of an animal or even another person or anyone uh, mess up or interfere with his perfect order. And I can't directly say this because I know there are certain nurses and doctors that might innocently uh, be infected by the blood of a sick person uh, and, 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 and their blood might affect them and that person did nothing wrong or, or was supposedly innocent uh, and, and, and so on. And when they got infected with it, my heart goes out to stories like that. However, on the other side of this, I will say, uh, from the whole idea of that person's blood getting infected all the way to the person that's been infected by it, even though they might not be doing things that are not morally wrong, they're still most likely doing things that are against Yahweh's instructions, not keeping the Sabbath, breaking the commandments, and so on. So this little old nurse might not be a, a, a drug addict or, 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 or a prostitute or something else, and here she is helping uh, somebody who is, uh, and, and their blood is infected, and then she gets infected. And people say, "Oh, it's so sad that somebody who is, uh, uh, you know, not doing those things would be infected and innocent, and so on." Well, she's not really innocent because uh, she she's still living against the words of Yahweh and still uh, committing this intentional sin uh, on a, on a regular basis. Uh, but the point being is that the blood here, there's no blood diseases that humans are worried about, or the men were worried about back then. And the point being here today is, when, when, when pureness of Yahweh is involved, you don't have to worry about man and, 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 or anything. You don't have to worry about anything. Yahweh's got this. It's only when sin is involved that uh, the blood becomes infected or the life becomes infected. Blood was one of the purest things of scripture that Yahweh said, it's so pure, it's mine. It's mine. And Yahweh has the cleansing and healing power to heal any disease. He has the cleansing and healing power to, he to heal uh, any blood or anything like this that's been infected or diseased. But I'm going to say it again here, and I don't hear anyone talking about this, but I'm going to talk about it. It says, only uh, somebody who, whose life is, is, has intentional sin in it will their blood be infected. Uh, will the blood be infected? Will, will, because what intentional sin does, it makes the pure impure. And this is a, a very obvious reason why to worry about the world today. Because uh, we don't want to mix the, 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 the clean and the unclean. And, and, and because we know what happens. So it's not about mixing the, the blood of somebody clean with the blood of somebody unclean. It's about uh, mixing the life of somebody who's clean with the life of somebody who's unclean. That unclean person most likely will become infected on one level or another. So we, we got to get away from this fear of blood when we read this scripture, because people run away from this. They don't want to read the scripture. They hear blood. The, the blood is sprinkled on the people. The blood cleanses. It didn't disease them. You know, when we hear Yeshua died for us, his blood covers our sins. We're not all worried like, oh, I need to wear some rubber gloves because the blood, of you know, no. So I, I just, I'm just saying this because the word blood is used quite often and it has a very negative connotation today, but it's not necessarily a negative thing. So, so and, and I, I, I say you need to be careful around people that are bleeding, absolutely. Uh, and, and certain diseases are connected to this, but uh, you need to understand the comfort and the presence and the protection, the, the wing that Yahweh puts us under and not fear man and, and, and so be it and so. Verse 15, next, Aaron and his sons must lay their hands on the head of one of the, uh, the rams. Uh, then slaughter the ram and splatter his blood against the sides of the altar. Cut the ram into pieces and wash off the eternal organs and the legs and set them alongside the head and the other pieces of the body. Then burn the, uh, burn the entire animal on the altar. This is a burnt offering to Yahweh. It is a pleasing aroma, a special gift presented to Yahweh. 
a pleasing aroma. Now, I'm a, veg I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegan. I don't eat any animals. Uh, but I do have to admit, when I pass a barbecue, it smells good. How in the world can a dead carcass smell so good when it's being burnt up? And, uh, you know, I mean, I hear stories about the Holocaust of humans that were burnt and they didn't smell good. Uh, I, you know, even if you take human hair and you burn it, it doesn't smell good. But a dead carcass can smell good. Why and how? And uh, we see right here, uh, we see right here why and how. It says, uh, this burnt offering, it says, this burnt offering, this particular burnt offering uh, to Yahweh is a pleasing aroma, a special gift presented to Yahweh. Very interesting, very interesting. It says in verse 19, it says, uh, well, let me see a note here. Okay, verse 19 says, Now take the other ram and have Aaron and his sons lay their hands on the head, then slaughter it and apply some of its blood on the right earlobes of Aaron and his sons. Also put it on the thumbs of their right hand and on the big toes of their right feet. Now, and splatter the rest of the blood against the sides of the altar. Now, there are certain things in Scripture we just don't understand and we can't comprehend. Uh, these fine, minute details of putting the blood on the earlobe and the fingertips and the toes and all this. Uh, but again, as I say all the time, just because uh, we don't understand it doesn't mean there's not a significance to it. And I'm sure there's a significance to this. And we need to not, uh, not skip reading scripture. We need to pray for revelation of what that is about. Uh, about why uh, why their thumbs and their hands and 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 their right earlobes and their left foot and all this stuff. We need to get. We need to try to figure that out and understand that. But it says there are certain things that are known and certain things that are not known. Uh, so, so these are things. Uh, you know, we we cannot just say, say, well, that's silly. That's not silly. That's Yahweh. You know, we, just because we don't understand it doesn't mean it's silly. In this way, it says they and their garments will be set apart as holy. So now they're set apart as holy. And then we go to verse 20, 22. It, uh, it says, since this is the ram for the or ordination of Aaron and his sons, take the fat of the ram, including the fat of the broad tail and the fat around the internal, let's go uh, around the internal organs, the long lobe of the liver and the two kidneys and the fat around, uh, around them, along with the right thigh. It says, uh, take them one round uh, loaf of bread and uh, one thin cake mixed with olive oil and one water, a wafer from the, ba from the basket of bread with one yeast that was uh, placed in, in Yahweh's presence and put these in the hands uh, of Aaron and his sons to be lifted up as a special offering to Yahweh, as a special offering to Yahweh. And that's verse 25. And as we read verse 26 here, it says, Then take the breast of Aaron's or or ordinary ram and lift it up in Yahweh's presence as a special offering to him. Then keep it as your own portion. And the note here says in the One New Men Bible in verse 26, it says, A wave offering or heave offering is held up towards the heavens and then brought down. And it belongs to the priest who offered it. Verse 27 says, A wave offering is moved side to side, while the heave offering is moved up and down. This passage is of the concentration of the priest. And only the only time the wave and heave, heave offering are burned. So it gives you more insight into the offerings in Scripture. Now, now we're going to get to uh, a, a very significant Scripture here in verse 29. But first, verse 27 says, Set aside the portion of the or orientation ram uh, to belong to Aaron and his sons. This includes the breast, the thigh that will lift it up before Yahweh and a special, as a special offering. And then it says in 29, so let's take note of 29. It says, in the future, 
whenever people of Israel lift up a peace offering, a portion of it must be set aside for Aaron and his descendants. This is a permanent right. It is a sacred offering from uh, Israelites to Yahweh. So that's verse 28. It is a sacred offering. Now verse 29, Aaron's sacred garments must be preserved for his descendants who succeed him, and they will wear them when they are anointed and ordained, when they are anointed and ordained. And this literally means when they are filled. As we see when they are anointed and ordained, and some scriptures say concentrated, but when they are filled, the note here says, it's, it's a good, great note, it says, to be filled is literally uh, the translation uh, when people say concentrated. They will be anointed and filled with the Spirit. They will no be anointed and filled with the Spirit. So this is, uh, uh, is what they're discussing here. Now we're going to go uh, to verse 30. It says, The descendants who succeeds him as high priest will wear these clothes uh, for seven days as he ministers in the tabernacle of the holy place. Take the ram used for orientation ceremony and boil its meat in a sacred place. And then Aaron and his sons will eat the meat along with the bread and the basket at the tabernacle entrance. They may eat the meat and bread used for their purification in the orientation ceremony. No one else may eat them, for these things are set apart and holy. Set apart and holy. Uh, verse 34. If any one of the or if any of the ordinance or, or Orientation meat or bread remains until morning. It must be burned. It may not be eaten, for it is holy. Verse 36. This is how you will ordain Aaron and his sons to their offices, just as I have commanded you. The or or ordination ceremony will go on for seven days. Uh, each day you must sacrifice a young bull and a sin offering to purify them, making them right with Yahweh. So it says each day, this was daily, this was done daily, and this is known as the daily sacrifices that they're talking about now, which was done in the temple every day. There were two sacrifices. There was a morning sacrifice and an even sacrifice on the third and the ninth hour of every day. And we could say, well, that would be, what, nine and three o'clock? Uh, it's the third and ninth hour of daylight, first of all. It's not the, the, the day didn't start at, 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 at midnight. And, and, you know, and, and, and it's a third and ninth hour of daylight. Now, this is another area which we discuss when does the day start, with, which we discussed several times already. But it says in, in, in the next verse, it says, uh, Afterwards, cleanse the altar by purifying it and making it uh, anointed with oil. Purify the altar and concentrate it every day for seven days. After that, the altar will be absolutely holy. Whatever touches it will become holy. And uh, the note here says, notice the overwhelming emphasis on holiness uh, of Yahweh. The priest, the priest, the clothes, the tabernacle, and the sacrifices had to be clean and concentrated, prepared to meet Yahweh. In contrast today, we tend to take Yahweh for granted, rushing into worship and treating him with almost uh, casual disregard. Uh, but we worship the Almighty Creator uh, and Sustainer of the universe. Remember uh, that profound truth when you pray or worship and come before Him with reverence and repentance, to come to Him uh, clean and holy and to set apart yourself is, is just a beautiful thing here. So verse 37, it says, Whatever touches the altar shall be holy. And that is very significant. Whatever touches the altar shall be holy. So extremely significant. And then, uh, and so now, what are you up to here? Uh, we're up to, uh, thirty-eight. These are the sacrifices you are to offer regularly on the altar. Uh, two, uh, offer two lambs that are a year old, one in the morning and the other in the evening. So those are the morning and evening sacrifices, and that's discussed in verse 39. The morning and the evening sacrifices. And then there's uh, the note here says, uh, this expression for evening here is uh, 
is Ban Habib, referring to between uh, the sundown and the darkness. And this here, in the note here, in the one new man by, in the Hebraic Roots Bible says, the actual times listed here are from sunrise for the morning sac uh, sacrifice and sunset for the even sacrifice. During the temple times, due to the amount of sacrifice being done, they actually did them at the third and ninth hour of daylight. So it's not necessarily nine and three o'clock every day because uh, that's man-made calendar. Yeshua said there are uh, 12 hours a day and 12 hours of a night, but uh, you know, but the amount of time in each hour is not determined at 60 minutes. The amount of time in each hour was determined by the sunrise and sunset. So you had the beginning of the day at sunrise, the end of the day at sunset, and you divide that by 12, and then you determine how many days, how many minutes are in an hour. So the sacrifice could have been at, at 10 a.m. Or, 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 or 8 a.m., depending on how many minutes in an hour during those days. But the key is they had two sacrifices. They had the morning and the evening sacrifices. That were the two times, the two sacrifices. And uh, I discussed this a lot in my book, The Daylight Diet, and the importance of this, and, and digestion and eating twice a day is what they, what they did after they made their sacrifices. Uh, it says so. Uh, one in the morning and the other in the evening. With one of them, offer two quarts of choice flour mixed with one quart of pure oil and pressed olives. Also, offer one quart of wine as a liquid offering. Offer the other lamb in the evening, along with the same offerings of flour, wine in the morning. It will be a pleasing aroma, a special gift presented to Yahweh. So again, we see death offered on a regular basis okay we see death offered on a regular basis and and we understand that uh that yeshua's death uh a messiah's death is offered on a regular basis for us today and everybody every single sinner at any time not only in the morning and evening at a certain time at any time 100 percent of the time uh has this opportunity to accept this sacrifice that was made on our behalf or for us uh, and, and, and taking away the penalty of death for our sin, if we are willing to repent. And that is the death of Yeshua Messiah as our ultimate sacrifice. Understand, nothing is going to be covered if we do not follow the order of Yahweh. These sacrifices that were being made, if they went in and they didn't follow these instructions, as a matter of fact, not only were they uh, going to be refused, but the people would be put to death quite often. They would have died for not following the right instructions. And we have instructions and guidelines for Yeshua's sacrifice, for the sacrifice of Messiah. This is so significant, people. Uh, if you follow the instructions of Yahweh, he offers his, his, his ultimate lamb, the ultimate sacrifice for us. And, 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 and it takes away the penalty of the death that we deserve and sets us free. However, Within that order of that accepting that sacrifice, something must take place for us to get the mercy of Yahweh. It must. And that is repentance. Without repentance, his sacrifice is not going to cover your sins. Repentance means to change your mind and your actions of the way you are going to live. Because if you accept Yeshua and you do not repent and change your mind to change your lifestyle and your actions to turn from them, you're not set free from the results of sin. You need to understand the order of Yahweh. And just as he was given all these instructions about the death and the sacrifice of animals, you know, if these, sac if these sacrifices and offerings were made out of the system that Yahweh created, they, they they weren't going to get what they offered. And I will suggest to you the same thing with Yeshua Messiah. If you try to accept him without repentance, you're not going to get what his sacrifice offered. So it's very it's significant and important. So verse 42. These birth offerings are to be made each day from generation to generation. Offer them in Yahweh's presence in a tabernacle entrance. Uh, there uh, I will... Uh, meet you and speak with you. There he will meet us and speak with us. Now, why aren't the sacrifices 
continue today because it says throughout all your generations generation to generation some people say well because yeshua is our final sacrifice so we don't need any more sacrifices because he's our final sacrifice uh, as nice as that sound it doesn't say in the scripture here from generation to generation until messiah comes it says from generation to generation but the thing is and like i've expressed over and over again uh that we're only responsible for doing what we're capable of doing when it comes to Torah of Yahweh. And the reason why we're not doing these sacrifices today is because there's no place to do them because they were told to be done ultimately in the temple. Uh, and the temple is no longer here. And scripture says when a temple returns, the sacrificial system will return. And, and, and everything around that we can discuss when we get later into Ezekiel and other books of scripture. Uh, but, uh, but this is why uh, we're not we're no longer following this today. It says, uh, I will meet the people. I will meet the people of Israel there in the place made holy by my glorious presence. And now we could use Yeshua as our ultimate sacrifice. And Yahweh meets us in, in his ultimate presence when we repent and accept that sacrifice and that offering that has been made for us. Verse 44, yes, I will concentrate the tabernacle and the altar, and I will concentrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priest. Then I will live among the people of Israel and be their Elohim. And they will know that I am Yahweh, their Elohim. I am the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that I could live among them. I am Yahweh, their Elohim. And the note here says, Yahweh's action in bringing the Israelites out of Egypt showed his great desire to be with them and protect them. Throughout the Bible, Yahweh shows that he is not uh, uh, absent. Uh, he wants to live among us, even in our hearts. Uh, don't exclude Yahweh from your life. Allow him to be your Elohim and obey him. And obey him. Allow him to be your Elohim and obey him. So you see, so, so we need to obey and follow his guidelines and instructions. So we need to allow him to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so there we have, and here it says, uh, let's see if there's any note in the one new man, Bob, before we finish here today. All righty, and it says, I believe that's it. Okay, so that was the end of the of the scriptures verses today. Tomorrow we'll be reading Exodus 30. Hallelujah, we got through it today. And uh, I'm going to pick a verse for the day here. And I guess we'll go and start off at the beginning. Uh, and I like... Uh, Verse, verse 1, it says, These, This is the ceremony you must follow when you concentrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priest. And if we are being served as uh, priest today, we must follow. So I'm going to highlight must follow and use that as a scripture of the day, verse 29 1. All right, everybody, thank you for watching this morning. Uh, please share this with others. And if you're watching live, thank you. And if you want to join us live, if you're watching a replay, every morning we have a, a whole group of people writing stuff. Uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, in, in the chat room, they have a live chat when we're doing this live. So thank you. Thank you. And praise Yahweh. May Yahweh bless your day today. And remember, just repent, repent to him daily, uh, change your mind about living, uh, according to the flesh, live according to his word and have a holy blessed day, everybody until then, everybody, uh, shalom, shalom, and have a great day.